So today we're talking Rolex again. Surprise, surprise. I know it's another Rolex video, but I promise it's gonna be my last one. Maybe. Probably not. I don't know, let's just play the intro, but we'll find out eventually. Welcome back to another Monarch Timepiece collection video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my Rolex Bluesy, the Submariner 116613LB, also known as the Bluesy. So I've had this watch already for like three years. I bought it actually at the beginning of the pandemic back in 2020. And I, the story behind me getting this watch is really unique and has a very special meaning for me and as you can see it's like the logo for monarch and i think it's in my opinion it's the watch to get if you're gonna get a rolex submariner if you're gonna get that one rolex sport piece model you know to kind of sum up everything about what the brand is for me i think the bluesy is like the perfect watch to get so for starters i actually did get this watch back in 2020 it is a 2017 model so it has the ceramic bezel with the sunburst blue dial not like the flat smurf blue dial no the made those in a, for a few years but I actually think I got the better model so it is the 40 millimeter ceramic case and for me I think that this watch is kind of like the perfect summation of everything of what Rolex should be and in my opinion this watch is just perfect in every sense of the word it honestly pictures don't do it justice you need to see this thing in person and wearing it is such a delight I mean it's it's a staple in my collection for sure and since then, you know, it's probably been like the most worn Rolex model of, of the three that I have just because of the fact like, I just love it. You know, there's so many things about it that I love it. You know, it's obviously the two-tone, the ceramic bezel, that sunburst blue dial that is just, this man thing is so good. So let's get right into it and go into the specs. So the Submariner comes at a 40 millimeter diameter case along with having a lug to lug length of 48 millimeters, a lug to lug width of 20 millimeters, and a case thickness of 12.5 millimeters. So my Rolex Bluesy Reference 116613LB does have the Rolex Caliber 3135. It is an obviously an automatic movement with a 48 hour power reserve, along with having a water resistance of 300 meters, which is equivalent to 1,000 feet. And forgive me if I sound all nasally congested, I've been sick and yeah, I haven't been feeling the greatest. But don't worry, you know, swap myself, came out negative, so we're good. I did come out positive for tuberculosis, so there's that. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. So yeah, if I if I sound a little congested and um, you're hearing me with the sniffles or cough a little bit, I apologize. But getting back to the watch, honestly, there's so many things about this watch that just kind of make it ideal for me. And and this is what I mean by that. My favorite, probably my favorite looking Submariner is the No Date Black. You know, I think that one is just the nicest one. It's it's symmetrical, it's super clean, it's brushed steel, it's very sporty, it you know looks great with a suit, with jeans and a t-shirt, it's awesome. But if you want something that's got a little bit more razzle dazzle, a little bit more flash, a little bit more color, vibrance, and just really just ties well together, this is the one that you want. You want the bluesy. Trust me. The two-tone combination between the steel and the 18 karat gold on it, along with that touch of blue. It just, it's everything. It's perfect in every sense of the way. I honestly wear this when I'm wearing scrubs, when I'm wearing a polo and jeans, when I, I've worn this with suits, I've worn this with tuxedos, and it just looks nice. Because of the fact there is that combination of, of a precious metal with a brushed steel and like a little bit of touch of color, it gives it, you know, a sense of being sporty, but yet still like elegant and classy, which is really nice. You know, you don't really get that too much with a Daytona, with a black sub. Those just look too sporty, you know, and yeah, maybe a Daytona may have some brushed steel to it, but it's brushed steel. It's not, you know, a precious metal. Even if it was white gold, it wouldn't even look like a precious metal. No one would know. The retail for this watch right now, I think, is up to about 15000 which is a little bit more than when I got it, because I got it around retail. I didn't get it from the AD, but I got it around, around retail. I'm not trying to sound out of touch at all by any means, but I think $15,000 for this watch is a heck of a deal it really is i mean let's think about what you're getting right you're getting a rolex sports model okay you're gonna get it with in a two-tone with obviously precious metal with a ceramic bezel sunburst dial and a date function that's pretty good even if you were to go into the like secondary market for this watch it's still not a bad deal it really isn't 
let's say you're gonna go out and buy a no date sub. I wanna say it's about maybe $9,000, $9,500, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know the retail prices off the top of my head. And then let's say you're gonna go to a gray market dealer. They're gonna charge you $14,000, $13,500 for it. It's like $4,000 markup. It's like, okay, for a steel no date model. That to me seems a little bit excessive. If it was if it was closer to 10, maybe 11, 11, 5, I'd be like, all right, that's okay. $2,000, that's not that bad. Because the likelihood of a Rolex AD calling you for anything sport model related is out of this world. So $2,000 mark wouldn't be that bad. So, you know, if it was $11,000, I want to understand. Now, the bluesy being at 15,000 something, 15,000 and change, so it's obviously a markup because of the materials that I said that it has. Now, let's say you were to go into the gray market for this watch. I've seen these watches posted for like 16, 16, five, maybe 17. So you're telling me a $2,000 markup or a 2,000 and change or a thousand dollar and change markup, and you're gonna get a freaking nice watch. I mean, in my opinion, that's like a no brainer. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, that, that, that's what makes me kind of think that this is the Rolex sports model to get because of everything, you know, you're taking everything into consideration, right? The way that I was saying it's a Rolex sports model, the price of it is for the most part justified. I'm not trying to sound out of touch, I promise. Even if you were to go into the great market for this watch, I mean, I still think, you know, $2,000 market for this that you're probably not gonna get the call for from an AD unless you have an established relationship with them and you've bought 31 millimeter oysters, you know, perpetuals and tag hoyers that you don't want and maybe you'll get this and you're gonna spend seven, eight, nine, ten thousand $10,000 before you get this at retail, dude, just go get it at the great market. I'm not advocating for that, but I'm just saying if AD is not gonna play nice, what, why should you go and spend $20,000 before you're gonna get, you know, before you're gonna avoid the $2,000 markup? Just go to the green market. But that's just my opinion. Yeah, comment down below. What's your favorite Rolex sports model? I would love to know. All right, so that's gonna be for today, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. We're almost at 400 subs. I don't know whenever this video goes up, maybe we'll already be at 400, which I, you know, a man can only dream. So thank you all so much for that are subscribed and please, you know, comment down below, like the video. All right guys, take care, later.